Hey, man. What's up? Uh, got a question for you. Is it have I ever heard of something? Yes. Wow, that's going to make <laughs> this look pretty scripted. Uh, have you ever heard of the Bomber Mafia? The Bomber Mafia? Yeah. What is it? Just a bunch of Italians running around in bomber jackets? <laughs> They're just out here look bunch of Italian so cool guys. <laughs> the in coolest their Italians. Chino khakis and <laughs> olive green bomber jackets and aviators. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, at, actually, you're right on. Yeah. You're dead on. That's the bomber mafia. And they they look like One Direction. <laughs> what? <laughs> Red Direction. I really want the first photo to be just all of One Direction <laughs> wearing bomber jackets, and I'm praying to God, Lord, make this happen. Look up One Direction, and it's just them in bomber jackets. I can't find any bomber well, jacket photos of anybody. And of anybody? What did you spell <laughs> bomber wrong? You spell B O M M E R. Boomer jackets. <laughs> boomer jackets, and it's just a, all I'm it's seeing. It's the Boomer is, Mafia. Wow, One Direction's super old, apparently. Bunch of. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen them, but man, they look old. I've never seen them. I've never seen. Them. I couldn't tell you. I, I don't know what they. Here's the thing. Google knew when I wrote Boomer jackets what I really meant. It's uh, like uh, you don't want that. Your kid's gonna <laughs> kill innocent people either way. <laughs> I guess I need to take more evasive maneuvers with my jokes. Uh, Des Moines, get rid of it. See you later, <laughs> Clevy Land. I have a theory that we've never flown. <laughs> now hear me out. This is real. His nicknames are War Criminal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Things I learned last night. So the Bomber Mafia. The Bomber Mafia. Um, Never heard of it. So this was a group uh, uh, of mafiaites from <laughs> what? Mafiaites. Mafiaites. Uh, well, I mean, uh, that's what you call mafiaites people. Mafiaites is what you mafia. call is what you call a group of uh, Mennonites who go and cap people's knees. Oh, Mennonites. I didn't know that. Mafiaites. <laughs> No, so it was these, these people they were uh, part of the Air Corps uh, tactical school uh, in the United States. Of Have America. you heard of the bomber mafia? <laughs> it's a bunch of mobs <laughs> that chew up bombs. It's explosive mothmen. Yeah, here are our nukes. Here are our fake nukes, <laughs> and those are mothballs to really make sure that the moths don't get to either of them. Yeah, the bomber mafia. They'll they'll take them down. These bunch of moths. Yeah, we got a problem with that. Anywhere you yeah. keep bombs, gotta watch out for the moths. We call the queen mother. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> mother, may I? That's mission. Mother, may I? Oh my gosh, mother, may I? All right, the anyway. mother of all bombs. Uh, so here's here's the thing. The bomber mafia was started at the Air Corps Tactical School. He just shrugged. Also known as Axe, uh, has nothing to do with the Book of Axe, Axe or Axe or the body spray or the body spray. Yeah, yeah, has nothing to do with any of that. Here's well, never mind. Uh, so <laughs> uh, in the 1920s, uh, Ooh, sometime early. between the 26 and 29, uh, that was like the formative years Did of the, the bomber mafia. Okay. The twenty sixth year of the nineteen hundreds, uh, and, and so uh, it, this was an interesting phase because during World War One, uh, things were bad, uh, terrible war. People sure. were just slaughtered in mass all throughout World War One, and they called it the war to end all wars, not because they thought, oh, no one's going to fight again after this, but because they thought that after this war, we're going to realize. This is bad and figure out a better way to do this. Uh, we in the future know that's not what happened. <laughs> it got worse. Really loved your eyes optimism though in the night <laughs> in the 26th, you know, year of the 1900s. <laughs> the bomber mafia said, uh, okay, maybe that maybe we have a way. Maybe we have an answer. Um, and so the, the bomb mafia, the bomber mafia uh, to put to paint the picture uh, at this point in time, there was no air force. Uh, yeah, there was the army didn't exist. Uh, th yeah, they did. There was an army. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a theory that we've never flown. <laughs> now hear me out. This is real. 
<laughs> okay, every time I'm on a plane, I'm like, there's no way we're in the air right now. This is real. You think I, it's a bus? This is a real <laughs> thought I've had. I'm not joking. This is a real thought I've had. Where like I'm just like, I feel like they're just messing with me. Like we get on the plane. It's and like, like those rides at Disney World. Bro, <laughs> are you listening to me right now? Because I'm telling you the truth, okay? I'm telling you, I am a plain truther. <laughs> Okay? okay, and I am. I literally sit on the Southwest flight, and I feel it go. <laughs> there's just a kid outside. And then sometimes it's just like a little real. Steady. And I'm like, there's no way we're in the air right now. This is fake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you can't I open mean, the door. You can't open the window to prove that's on a green screen. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can't say for sure it's not you're right. <laughs> you know, but it's also you. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to ask a pilot? You're going to ask the people who profit off the green screens. <laughs> the green screen. How do ask green screen yourself, companies stay in gains business to benefit from this? Here's, here's here's what you really need to ask yourself. Green screen businesses have been in business for years. How many people are buying green screens? Not many. Just how many Hollywood people and a couple YouTubers? That's not enough to sustain a whole business. That's right. It's, there's got to be got a lot of planes. Delta, Southwest, American Airlines, Spirit, and the phenomenal thing about the that's green why screens, Spirit flights you shouldn't open the windows <laughs> because like their CGI is not as great. It's not as good. Yeah, that's the phenomenal thing about their green screens is you don't need post production with their green screens. They work immediately. They're just green. You open the window and. You don't have to run it through software or anything. It's just visually whatever you want it to be. It's it's like an LED, but okay, it's just I a feel piece like you're mocking me, and I'm cloth. actually coming to you saying that I don't <laughs> think planes are real. <laughs> <laughs> I really sometimes have legitimately thought, what if this is all made up? I mean, it could be. It could be. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I the bomber that. mafia. The bomber mafia. Thank so you planes for acknowledging. Are real. Planes were real in this scenario. In this universe. In this okay. cinematic universe, planes I'm exist. If I make a documentary about it, it's going to be called The Wrong Brothers. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um, so planes aren't real. Planes are real in this universe. I saw one flying today. This is a thought I had this morning. <laughs> I saw one flying today, and I was like, there, "There's no way." <laughs> what do you think? That's like a RC I saw, car. I saw just that, and I was like, "It's it's Southwest on the side and everything." And I was yeah. like, "There is no way that's real." That's fake. So what did you think is just an RC car flying? I think they're in my brain plane. Oh my god. I think I think it's all like dude. I'm not joking where sometimes I'm like this is all made up. Yeah, well, that's great. Hopefully we have time to hit our second episode because this will be perfect. Uh, (laughs) I was like that plane is synthetic media. I know (laughs) it right now. I know that it's made up. Okay, so so here's the the thing you have to suspend your disbelief for a second and just believe interesting that planes are real. (laughs) This is what I mean. <laughs> Here's what I mean: is that eels went viral on the rest of the internet, and then yeah. people found our podcast. Yes, and yeah. the first five minutes of that podcast is atrocious. Yes, it is yeah. us doing this. Yeah, and yeah. I'm wondering, are people going to find <laughs> this episode? Because this is, I've, I've, I'm so sorry. For guys. a few minutes, been trying to steer us back in. Yeah, but it's as futile as the pilots <laughs> on Southwest <laughs> because it's all made it's up. All fake. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing: you have to suspend your disbelief for a moment and just I- I accept the fact that planes existed at this point in time, right? Uh, but the Air Force. Tell me whatever you want. The, <laughs> the Air Force did not. The Air Force did not exist. Okay. Uh, so uh, at that time, the Army just had an arsenal of planes that would use to support ground troops mm-hmm. on stuff. Uh, so uh, what these people proposed is they said, "Hey." We see a future where the ground troops are not necessary. It's all air combat. Yeah. And so uh, what they proposed is they they basically proposed an early form of strategic strategic airstrikes. Uh, probably heard of this, but the idea is you bomb the most important assets your enemy has, and that's it to wipe them off to wipe them out. So they had a speech in the early 30s where they said. Um, if we were to go to so war with Germany, a little bit of force basically just war. <laughs> They're like, why don't we hit 
good targets instead of bad ones. Okay, no, 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 no. This was a revolutionary idea at the time because the time. Okay. Bombers were rarely used, and if they yeah, were used, it time, was just had drop to go, them anywhere. You had to go through all the front lines. You had to go through. Yes. If they had a bigger infantry than you, then that was it. Yeah, and all they would really do is they would just fly over the battle and just drop a bunch of bombs on the other side of the the battlefield. They wanted there was no strategy to the bombers. It was just a support technique, right? These people, it was a new idea. It was hey, we're going to hit the important things. So they had a speech in the 30s where they said, hey, we think 12 bombs could end a war. Uh, They said we think if we got to we went to war with Germany and they said if Germany dropped 12 bombs in the right spot, it would end the war. And so their theory was they basically laid out this whole strategy where they said if if Germany were fly to New York City, and drop bombs and destroy all the bridges and the aqueducts. They said we'd be done in a matter of days uh, because the city, the people on Manhattan would have no way out of Manhattan and they would have no way to get water and it would be absolute pandemonium immediately. Um, And so they said uh, basically the US would have no ability to run any of the factories or any of the wartime industry that comes out of Manhattan would be completely halted because of the disaster there and to be able to effectively solve that issue. They would have to not be worried about a war, so they would have to surrender to. So what you're saying is this group came to the government and was like, hey guys, we should like try harder. You know, maybe we should think through what we're doing here because right now you all are just like you guys are just scattering bombs like you're the flower girl of World War One's <laughs> wedding. All right, there's no strategy here. <laughs> well, World War One was over, and they said, "Let's take some notes from World War One in case there's a sequel." Right. Um, and I said, "Say we go to war with I don't know Germany." Let's say uh, <laughs> we go to a World War Two. What are we gonna call it? <laughs> Ultimate Let's war. Let's say we go to a greater war. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ultimate war. Kong's revenge. <laughs> And let's say we end up, I just think we should try some different things. Yeah, so the idea was to be a little more moral because before bombers were just whatever and if somebody was in the path of bomber just get killed. bummer bummer, uh, but these people were like let's instead make sure the bombers hit only strategic targets so it limits casualties. So you're only okay. killing people who are at that target. You're not killing civilians. You're hopefully not killing civilians. You're hopefully not even killing infantry. You're just destroying the target yeah. um, that would cripple that um, military's ability to function. Um, so it's an interesting idea. The problem was uh, it was about a hundred years ahead of its time. Um, we're still not even great at this. I was say, it requires a lot of intelligence to do that, though. <laughs> yeah, you need to know where the stuff and not is. Like intelligence is like be smart brains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like <laughs> you've got to know where the things are. Yeah. You've got to. You also probably do need some intelligence. <laughs> well, that's that's where the issue kind of came in. Is everyone was just dumb <laughs> back at then. this point in time? I'll tell you people what, were in the twenty sixth year of nineteen hundred, <laughs> those people were. And were I'm going to go on record to say it: idiots. They were historically really dumb. Historic morons. It was it was the most historic stupidity the and world has ever seen. Some of you seen. are listening. And you're like my grandfather, who is like old and like old now, <laughs> uh, who was born. In like 1926, 1929 era, and I want you to know your grandpa is a historic really idiot. Dumb. <laughs> just real just dumb. Just uh, 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 and that's certifiable. You can't refute that. It's it's proven. The most dumb people came out of those years. Um, so bummer. Anyways, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> bummer, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, the issue was at that point in time. Um, yeah, it, uh, honestly up until recently we didn't have the technology to effectively say this is our target. That's what we're going to hit right um, because uh, a few things uh, uh, when you're flying over um, a target in the sky in a plane. Theoretically, if planes work, if planes are real, if planes are real. Theoretically, I'll go with you in the fantasy. There's a lot of things that it's not like shooting a gun um, where you just kind of aim and like you have to calculate bullet drop and wind a little bit, uh, but you're not at distances enough where that's going to make that much of a difference with bombers. They actually had to do like actual calculations before dropping the bomb to figure out where that bomb was going to land because 
you have to take in at the height, the altitude they're at, the wind actually plays a very large effect because it could move that off course. Atmospheric pressure, same, plays a very large effect, could move it off course. The speed that you're flying at plays a big factor, so it could move it off course. And so there's all these different factors, a lot of which were um, uh, pretty uh, uh, hard to plan for. Like they yeah. would just be <clears throat> present at the moment of the drop. Uh, right. that you would have to all of a sudden do your calculation for and so constantly bombers That's how we end up with bombs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bombers. It was hard to hit a target. Well, I mean, which episode we talk about there like underneath golden corrals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, I mean because we accidentally drop bombs. We don't know where they're going. We have no idea where they're going. It's true. It's a lot like you know, and if you're a parent listening, this is for you. <laughs> it's kind of like hey, listen, you can raise your kid and teach them right from wrong and do all the right things, but I mean the pressure, the wind. You don't know where your kid's going to end up. <laughs> this has been youth pastor moments. What's the moral of that? The moral is, hey, you know, <laughs> quit trying to micromanage your, your kids. Gonna suck your no kids matter gonna what, be, your kids going <laughs> to kill innocent people either way. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's the moral. Your kids gonna gonna destroy civilizations. Oh so either way, the bomber. I'm only saying because I know your parents listen to it. And oh I go, gosh. guys, this is not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you did the best you, you could. Tried. There was a lot of other factors. <laughs> you know, um, that's not your fault. Oh my gosh. Okay, Tim Terry, you guys did great. <laughs> you did Thanks. your job. <laughs> he really messed it up. <laughs> Hey, really exciting news. October 30th in Kansas City, Missouri. We are doing a Tillin live show. Please get tickets. They are available right now on Tillin.com uh, and we're going to have special guests, a live episode, uh, Q&A, bunch of stuff. Tim right now is researching if we can get a monster truck there. You're going to love it. If you are anywhere near Kansas City or you're able to get there, we want to see you there. So please go to the website uh, and buy those tickets because the spots are limited. So Let's hang out and just keep making some amazing magic stuff together. Fiddle off, huh? So, uh, the Bobber Mafia, they were trying to propose this new way to do war that was going to hopefully be more humane. Okay. Uh, but it was not actually possible at the time. Uh, and so, all the other uh, uh, generals uh, were basically like, uh, is the bomber mafia just basically Air Force, but it hadn't been established yet. So it's the Air Corps. It's a group of people uh, like higher. It's not up. like a third party. Like, how you doing, uh, government? <laughs> no, not at all. It is. It's they are part of the Air Corps tactical school. So these are the people who are teaching the pilots for the army. Yeah. So it's Air Force, but it hasn't been established yet. Uh, sort of these. It's a select group within the unestablished Air Force, so not the whole people who ran the Air Corps school. Oh, were they're, like the, they're like the Blue Angels that do all the air stunts. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the army was like, "We're not going to yeah, do that. Sure. This is stupid." <laughs> <I hate you. laughs> the army was like, "This is never going to work. We're not going to do it. War works the way we've always done it, and so we're going to keep doing that." Basically. Yeah. Um, oh no, we know how to war. And so, <laughs> so, so basically, the bomber mafia kept theorizing better ways to do war, and it was sure. all with their bombers, um, and kept trying to do like these. They were doing these TED talks um, before TED, um, <laughs> uh, and so. Uh, oh, I can't make silly jokes, <laughs> but you can. Oh my gosh, this is a Tim silly joke hour. <laughs> okay. See, <laughs> this there, is, we've done too many bits. I can see this in your is, eyes. Anyways, I'll go over here. Yeah, just get out of here for a little bit. <laughs> keep, keep teaching. <laughs> so they uh, uh, they keep doing their TED talks. The the army's not interested, and then Pearl Harbor happens, and all of a sudden the army was like, "Hey, hey, bomber mafia, bomber moth." <laughs> that worked pretty well. Hey. We're kind of surprised. Wow. Hey, you know that idea you guys brought us like <laughs> 15 years ago. They did it to us. Yeah. Uh, wish you didn't put those all over YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, uh, suspect number one. Um, did you guys happen to like text anybody else about that or <laughs> tell anybody else that idea? Yeah, where did that? No. Why? Oh, just you, you know. 
just wondering just if curious about that. Um, hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, we gotta go. <laughs> gotta get out of here. I think we gotta get involved in a greater war. There's another. There's a uh, another war. This is the big one. It's a. It's it'll it'll end all wars. You know. <laughs> What 12 spots should we go to? <laughs> if you were to come up with just 12 targets, just 12 <laughs> just theoretical places, <laughs> just off the, the top war. of your head, would you list <laughs> point to them on this map? Treat this like a fantasy football team. You got 12 <laughs> slots and we got to bomb all of them. All right, <laughs> just point to the ones you want. <laughs> Any now they've got Anyone. full freedom. What now they're just allowed to just bomb wherever they want. <laughs> so they make these people generals. Oh, um, you come to me on the night of the Pearl Harbor attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bomber mafia <laughs> sitting back <laughs> petting their cat or whatever. I've never seen the. I've never seen. Uh, uh, is that? That's not Scarface. That's. Um, I think it's Scarface, isn't it? No. Godfather. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, <laughs> it might be a Scarface. Anyway, sorry, movie buffs. Tim <laughs> likes Hottie Boombalotti. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. real movies. <laughs> <laughs> you think I've got seven hours to watch The Godfather? No, no, Hottie Boombalotti. One hour, you're done. It's better. <laughs> uh, so uh, they they take this guy. His name's uh, Major General Hayward. S. Hansel Jr. His parents, that's his birth name. <laughs> his parents destined and him. And then he joined the military, and it was pretty They're crazy. Like, wow, that worked out great. <laughs> All right, there we go. Lieutenant Major General. <laughs> his uh, his nickname uh, was Possum. Uh, oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, and so he. Is that real? Yeah. His nickname Dude, what do you got to do to get that nickname? <laughs> you know? I don't know. Was I there any weird nicknames at your high school? There was a guy at our high school named Biscuit. Ooh, yikes. That's rough. Yeah, he couple. was cool. Was Everyone he? loved biscuit. Yeah, really cool guy. There's a couple I can think of, but I can't say them out loud. Um, <laughs> we went to a Christian school. Tim Terry again. <laughs> now your fault. You see what I'm saying? You guys did fine. And then you sent him to a Lutheran school, and that was where the the, the barometric pressure changed. <laughs> you know, so big problems. Uh, okay, so uh, he. Uh, becomes a general possum and yeah possum becomes a general and possum says um, let's do some bomber mafia stuff and so they were like bomber mafia. Stuff. Here's my chance and so he goes and he tries to be a bomber mafia. Yeah, yeah -er. bomber mafia bomber mafia. That's the correct way. And uh, he uh, fails big time uh, oh. because like we said before the technology wasn't there yet. And so he tried to hit these. He was like, "Here's where we're gonna hit first, Cleveland." And they were like, "No, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 that's ours." No, he's like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> we've only planned what would happen if the enemy attacked us. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, we've yeah. theorized. Every bridge in New York. No, <laughs> no possum. <laughs> Do you think they address him as possum? You think he got on the phone yeah, with President his Superior? Who was the president at the time? Uh, I don't know. Hold on. Uh, oh, we know this, Truman. No. No. Yes. World War Two. Wow. I am embarrassed right now. You should be more Wilson? embarrassed. Wilson. No, he was World Roosevelt. War I. Roosevelt and Truman. Yeah. Yeah. Roosevelt was the first. Truman was the second. During the war. You got on the phone with Roosevelt. Roosevelt, if you will. <laughs> and was like, and he was like, "Hello, possum," or however he talked. And possum was like, "Thanks for using my pronouns." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, of course, possum. This is of what you've asked me to call. Roosevelt you, so was a respectful. I will respect. He was really progressive, honestly. <laughs> Very out of He was time. like, is this the new deal? Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so Hansel uh, hits no. Sorry, possum hits no targets. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> literally goes on a few Wait, missions. He flew it out there. No, 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 no. Oh, he but his team okay. goes out, um, and every target he had orchestrated misses. Um, and some of them actually ended up being a problem because there was like civilian casualties yeah. uh, from the miss. And so uh, possum gets fired. He was like a seven. <laughs> 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 and they were like miss <laughs> miss miss miss. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, and so he gets fired 
Um, and he gets replaced by another guy uh, in in the bomber mafia. Yeah, uh, and his name is Major General. Same first name. Crazy. <laughs> Major General requirement. Curtis Emerson LeMay, um, and so this is a famous general, and uh, it's because he did what? Because um, he did it. Yeah, he pulled it off. Possum got forgotten. Yep, forget the possum. Uh, let's see. Does he have a nickname? Curtis something LeMay. Yeah, uh, his nicknames are War Criminal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Him and George Bush. <laughs> I uh, know his nicknames are actually pretty. They're on the same uh, it's plane. Uh, so the the most tame nickname he has is the Big Cigar, uh, but he has three I like others. That one, though. I like Big Cigar. That's good. His others are Old Iron Pants. <laughs> okay. And then the Demon, <laughs> and okay. Bombs Away Lemay. Bombs Away Lemay. That's a good one, though. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's General Curtis. That's old Iron Pants over there. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. Uh, so Iron Pants, he comes <laughs> into the war and he's like he's part of the bomber mafia, so he believes in the possibility of this just war. Yeah, but he comes after the failure of Hansel and he says, okay, how can we do this better? Um, and he realizes he says if I don't do this right, I'm going to get fired because that's what happened to possum. Yeah, and so he says and also they won't use this tactic anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and so he's like, he's like, we got to get this right. And so what he says is, he tells his bombers, uh, "Here's what, here's what would happen in a bombing run. All the bombers would fly in, okay. and they would be seen from the ground, and anti-air guns would start shooting at them to try yeah. to shoot them out of the sky." Obviously. And so all the bombers would take evasive maneuvers until they got right over their target, and then they would fly straight, drop the bomb, and then take evasive maneuvers and get out of there. What General Curtis LeMay said is he did the math and he's like, so if this is the area of sky that we have um, over a bombing run and we fly in um, and there are X amount of uh, artillery guns um, that fire at this speed, you have, and I think it was like a one in 361 per, or one in 361 shots are going to land. And so he said the odds are overwhelmingly in your favor that you're not going to get hit. So he instructed his team to just not to take fly straight. <laughs> yeah, he's like, don't take evasive maneuvers. Just fly through it because you're probably not going to get hit. And everyone's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> old, old iron pants. They're like, this sounds oh, old iron <laughs> pants. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely still going to try to dodge. Yeah, uh, they're like, you could do it. He's like, okay, and so he does it. He's like, I'll fly. That's what I call him iron pants right there. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, and so he does that guy it. does not care at all. <laughs> he takes the lead plane. He takes the first plane. Yeah, in. They're all like we have a wife and kids and he's like, yeah, I left mine for this. <laughs> he's like, don't you have any honor? And so he takes the lead plane and they go and they didn't take a single hit um, and they realized, oh my gosh, you actually stand a better chance in these bombing runs if you don't take evasive maneuvers than you do if you How try to dodge. Humiliating it. though for the people <laughs> on the ground with the anti aircraft <laughs> things. I mean, like, so I mean, for your whole war experience, you got these planes coming in and they're like squirrely and dodge, and you're like, right? And you're like, yeah, we couldn't get them because they just we're they they're just evasive, the <laughs> you know? They were evasive in their maneuvers. <laughs> You know, we should call it that. That's why. <laughs> that's why we couldn't hit them, sir. And then the next day, they come in just straight on. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, hur, hur, <laughs> we hur, can't hur, hit hur. any of them. These things aren't real. Oh my! <laughs> I was getting there, you dingus. <laughs> I'm tired of you stepping. On. I'm tired. I need to. I guess I need to take more evasive maneuvers with my jokes. Because you just <laughs> shot my punchline <laughs> right out of the sky there, didn't you? Here, pretend I didn't do it. Just no, keep it doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, and they actually had some success. They hit their target. Um, they didn't take any casualties, and everyone was like, "Hey, and big Curtis cigar!" Bombs away, Lemay landed <laughs> safely at home, and all the other pilots went home to their families. And he sat there and was like, "Maybe this was the greatest sacrifice all along." <laughs> Because he went home alone, you know. Oh, yep, 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 yep. It's a Hallmark movie in the in the making. In the making, yeah. Lemay yeah. realizes that he needs la love. Yeah, he has a. Uh, they put out a Christmas movie, and it's called Lemay in a Manger. <laughs> 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 it's 
and he was the savior in the in the show. Um, <laughs> hate that with a passion. <laughs> That's really good. And so everyone's like, "Hey, big cigar, this worked out really great. You should keep doing that." And so it's the twelve th- bobs of Christmas is what I thought. <laughs> 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 the twelve bob of Christmas. We hit that bridge and water ducked. <laughs> So uh, the military comes back to LeMay and says, hey, good job. Do it again. <laughs> and so he goes and uh, tries to convince his team to do it again, and they're still hesitant. They so he the flies war? the. It did not end the war. Um, here's the thing. Uh, he was like, point, no, 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 no. The point was this is going to be over, and they were like, not nah, do it again. <laughs> here's the thing. At this point, they didn't trust him enough to do like the big targets, you know? Oh, so okay. it wasn't like a. It wasn't like it, they were still hesitant. The military is like, yeah. hey, they did a they did Pearl Harbor and that was crazy and they're like we're still like mm. and so it's like we should use the bombers, but we're not going to do what you said like just we're just going to bomb some stuff, but like not like you want yeah. us to yeah yeah and so basically it was kind of like prove it prove it's worth it sure and so they they, they kept bombing stuff um, and LeMay kept lead flying the lead plane um, and they didn't take any casualties. They kept hitting targets and it was working really well. Who's um, the red baron <clears throat> is that him? I don't know. I actually am not sure he's got a good pizza. Uh, yeah, but the Red Baron is a c- character and everything. Yeah, uh, his name is Manfred von Richthofen. Um, oh, he's not for the right team. Yeah, he's from Prussia, uh, and it Do looks like Russia? World War One. Uh, no, I mean Prussia. There's another place called Prussia. No, I don't know if you true. knew that. That's not true. Uh, it's yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's part of the plane conspiracy. Okay. Conspiracy plane. Uh, I'm pretty sure Prussia was like. Pre German, okay. like they were the German. Uh, the well, other it makes German. sense. They were pre Russia. I think so. Is that what you're trying to say? No, pre Russia. No, Russia was already also there. It was a pre- different place. It was pre- Russia. We're pre. It's like Peru and Aru. Okay. Two different things. <laughs> we should go to Peruba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, what if instead of New York we call it pre York? <laughs> pre York, I like that. Uh, no, the old, old one would be the old one would be pre York. Yeah, yeah, New the York and pre York. Pre York. Yeah, yeah. And I'm then, gonna go over to pre Navy. <laughs> <laughs> they got great deals. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I, we should cut all this. So Just let's start over. Good hey man, <laughs> man. <laughs> you ever heard of Bomber Mafia? I don't know. I feel weird today. So Curtis Lemay. Yeah. Um, during this whole all iron pants during the bomb main uh-huh. runs. He starts to kind of have a little bit of a change of heart um, because he starts <laughs> <he's> interacting. <laughs> <laughs> he starts interacting with the Royal uh, British Air Guard, oh. and the British Air Guard, meanwhile, has been doing these crazy bombing runs all throughout the Axis powers, yeah. where they are literally just flying over cities in the middle of the night and just dropping right. thousands of bombs into yeah. civilian cities. Um, and their their philosophy was. Uh, you just have to cripple Kill the everyone. enemy, destroy everything until they say we've had enough. Um, and LeMay starts interacting with these people more and more, and he starts kind of adopting their philosophy. Yeah, and he's seeing the success that they're having. And he's saying maybe that's the better strategy because just to kill as many people. Yeah, as possible. he's like maybe we just need more destruction to get them to say okay. No so more. originally his idea was how do we do this and not kill as many people? Yeah, and, and then they killed a couple like, people and he's what like if more. We killed everybody. <laughs> it's pretty accurate, actually. That's pretty close to what happened. And so him and Hansel had a falling out. Him and the possum had a falling yeah. out because possum's like, "Hey, the goal was to not kill that many you people." Possum. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, old Iron Pants. How you? How you? How you doing? I'm good. How are you, possum? Uh, I'm all right. I've just been. I've been hearing a lot of reports about the war effort, Big yeah. Cigar, and. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm just a little nervous about your strategy lately. Yeah, it feels like it feels like everything we fought for, you know, in uh-huh. our TED talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it seems like you're forgetting the why. You know, yeah. we read that yeah, book. Yeah. Uh, the other guy that did the te- Simon Sinek. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, you're forgetting why are we here? What is yeah. we are supposed Let me to ask not? Ask you a question, possum. Which one of us has a job right now? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, this is straight up out of an eighties movie. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna do whatever I gotta do, and why don't you uh, go back to where you work now? Old Navy, pre Navy, Carl Senior. 
How do you work now, huh? Why don't you go back to flipping burgers at Carl Senior? Huh? All right. I'm gonna go back and just start bombing kids. Yeah. Any anywhere you want to see bombed, oh, I can do it. You it's easy. Point to it. You know what? <laughs> I'd say what my favorite game is lately, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> you see that? You see that map over there? <laughs> Take a dart. Take a just just wherever it lands. Bombing it. Blowing it up. <laughs> just blowing it uh, up. Des Moines. Get rid of it. See you later, Clevy Land. <laughs> I don't even care how to say it anymore. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with too many advertisements during the Tillin podcast? <laughs> Have we got good news for you? Our patrons enjoy ad free experience and they get early access to content behind the scenes stuff, exclusive merchandise and access to a private discord channel where we all are in it, our producers and the hosts. So if you'd like to be a patron today and solve that problem. Why don't you text Tillin to 66866? So he starts doing carpet bombing, which, which is, is exactly what it sounds like. You yeah. roll out a carpet of bombs <laughs> that just <laughs> destroys everything in yeah. its path. No, no real um, care or idea of what you're hitting. You're just yeah. like, here's an area that's controlled by the enemy. Uh, let's it's like just a, it's drop like, a, like it's like a, uh, uh, an Easter egg drop. Yes, at a trendy church when they <laughs> fly a helicopter over. Exactly, and they exactly. drop all those <laughs> eggs. Yeah, except for like, you explosives. care where these land. <laughs> like not really. And the crazy guys <laughs> flying the helicopters, like I don't care, <laughs> right? You know. And like they only had him do it because they were hoping to invite him to church because they were yep. like, we're gonna get through to we're Cecil. Get, <laughs> you know, well, he's gonna get saved out of this. You know? um, so, so yeah, so he. Uh, uh, is starting to kind of change doing, philosophies yeah. going down the road. What part it's of the world like they're right now? It's kind of like a rock star. Like, you know, he's just about that life. He got yeah. before he got into it. He's like, he's like, I'd be different. Traded in his bomber like, jacket for a sweet leather one. <laughs> he's like, I wouldn't be like the rest of them. And now he's and out he there. Was. What year is this? 19. Uh, it's the height of World War two. two. So it's like <laughs> four, early 40s. Yeah, early 40s, late 30s, somewhere in that. that no, wait, they didn't get bombed. Uh, Pearl Harbor 39, was I think 41. Right. 41. Yeah, let me teach. <laughs> so, so this is like 42, 43. Yeah, something like that. Right. And now he's like up there, just like leather jacket. You yep. know, yep. I was going to say Greece hasn't come out yet. You know, it's not yeah. that style stuff yet, yeah, but, but you know, still. he's out there just like, yeah, we're just bombing everything. Bomb it. Everything. See it? Bomb it. Bomb it. Bomb it. Bomb that. Bomb it. Bomb it. Don't turn that plane. You're like, dude, why don't you twist it instead of bop it so much? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, bomb you it. keep losing. Bomb it. Bomb it. <laughs> bomb it. Bob, no, 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 yeah, twist. He wants it. you to pull it. Twi pull it. It's saying pull it. You keep losing. Pull it. All you're doing is bopping. Bob it. Bob it. Bob it. Bob it. Bob it. Pull it. Twist it. Pull it. Twist it. Bomb it. <laughs> Bomb it. Murder everyone. Bomb it. Pull it. <laughs> Can you adjust the audio in those? I would love to just have a custom bop it. You know, bop it, bop it, bop it. <laughs> just have bomb it. Real serious. Real serious. Real. The deep music voice. stops like that background. Like doo, 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 doo. it and like it, stops and it goes bomb it. <laughs> bomb it. Bomb it. <laughs> Wow. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's what Curtis it's did. Dark children's. <laughs> <laughs> he got he got real obsessed with bombing it. Yeah. Um, and uh, meanwhile, there was a couple projects going on. Um, one of them uh, you probably heard of the Manhattan Project, which is the project that built the nuclear bombs. Yes. Curtis uh, was involved with that, but what he was involved with is there was a group of chemists who were developing uh, what would later be known as napalm. Yeah. Um, which uh, and he was like, I freaking love that idea. Yeah, which at the time were called fire bombs. Um, so if you don't know what napalm is, uh, I'm surprised. Here's here's the concept. Basically, um, it's it's a bomb that's full that is like a shell, and inside of it there's a sackcloth, and that sackcloth is full of this gel, and the gel 
is really, really sticky. So it, whatever it hits, it's going to stick to skin buildings ground. It's not moving once it hits that um, and the bomb basically is like a Molotov cocktail. So the second it hits the ground, there's a fuse that ignites that sat cloth, which ignites the gel and then that gel is just going to stick to anything and just burn perpetually. Um, very, very intense um, and yeah. burns very, very hot and burns very, very slow um, where like gasoline would burn really, really quick and be gone. Yeah. Napalm burns very, very slow uh, and so it was a pretty big discovery of the time um, and there were immediately questions on whether or not it was ethical to Curtis was like what is ethics anymore? <laughs> So what do you mean ethical? We're at war. Yeah, um, bomb it. <laughs> he's <an> over <laughs> in the corner. Like, he's just like bomb it, and they're like, yeah, but I mean, like that's pretty. Bomb it. <laughs> <laughs> like and he's like, just do it, do it. Um, so he organizes a mission. This is after uh, victory in Europe Day. So Europe, the European front is over, um, but as you know, Japan was still a war front. Um, and Japan was still Warren. Yeah, they were still Warren and there was a belief that the Japanese military was never going to stop until they took over the entire Pacific. They were going island to island, just island hopping, taking over islands. And there's this belief that we were never going to get them to be able to surrender and that's eventually what led to the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right. but what a lot of people don't know about is what happened before Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, Curtis LeMay was a part of a team who built this strategy to firebomb or napalm uh, pretty much all of Japan um, and it started with the firebombing of Tokyo um, uh, which he <laughs> in planning this mission uh, he do you think humanity is going to end in a nuclear war Um, because it's know. things like that where someone is like let's just do that to the whole country. <laughs> Um, before hearing this story, I probably would have said no. I probably would have been like, people understand the ramifications of doing something like that. Yeah. And then hearing this story, but then there's I'm like, the major generals of the world. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think it's there's all idea. iron pants. Now that I now that I've heard this story, I'm like, maybe, maybe we would. Because uh, here's what Curtis said. Here's what Curtis said. What while planning say? while planning this this strategy here, he said, if we don't win this war we will all be tried as war criminals. Um, it's true. And so because uh, he knew what they were doing was about to be pretty horrific. Yeah, you either got to win or be conquered, I guess. Yeah, um, and so on the evening of March 9th, 1945, uh, the US Air Force uh, brought in uh, 279 uh, Boeing B 29 super fortresses over Tokyo. Um, and they dropped. Um, hold on, let me let me get this number right. I don't want to give you the wrong number. Um, they they flew into Tokyo, and they dropped. Man, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Um, <coughs> oh no, that's each each bomber. <laughs> So each bomber dropped three oh, point six is. tons of napalm. So Ooh. each of those two hundred and thirty bombers dropped three point six tons of so napalm. You're at like seven hundred tons in, of napalm into Tokyo. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Tokyo and all of Japan at the time, their city, their cities were laid out in a way, and this is why they chose napalm for this. Their cities were built um, almost entirely out of wood. They were all these wooden buildings and they were very closely packed together. And so they said if we could ignite a couple of these buildings, they take all of them. They're all burning. Um, it, they're too close. It'd be like a forest fire of city. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but just in case we're going to drop an insane amount of bombs anyways, um, and they were they're all the napalm bombs. They were all going to burn really, really quickly um, and so all through the night pretty much they dropped these bombs on on Tokyo the napalm um, and uh, by the end of the night uh, in a six hour period uh, estimates say that there was about 90,000 Japanese people who were killed um, and over 1 million were left homeless. They flattened Tokyo. Uh, they burned it to the ground literally the whole city um, and uh, since then historians have 
estimate or are pretty certain that this was the largest loss of human life in a six hour period ever. Um, uh, and then the U S military said, let's just keep doing it. And so they went and they did this to literally, I kid you not every city in Japan, except for Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And when they hadn't <laughs> surrendered, they nuked those two cities. Um, so yikes, the U S military literally obliterated every city, like burned every city in Japan to the ground and then nuked the last two. Um, and it was all it all stemmed from big cigar who initially was for a second. I forgot that it was his nickname <laughs> and I was like, wow, cigar companies. <laughs> That's what big tobacco over big, here. <laughs> big cigar over here is trying to flatten Japan, and I was like, oh, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all because he was just like bomb it. <laughs> exactly, um, and it, it's really interesting. I mean, it's hard it. to. I mean, at this point, like looking back at history, you go, wow, that's aggressive, that's horrible. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <sighs> and you don't want to be like, well, they could have made different decisions, but also yeah. they probably could have. Here's what's interesting about it, and here's why I said I changed my mind about a nuclear war. Um, I think there is something. There's a real phenomenon called the fog of war yeah. that clouds your vision and clouds the decisions that you make. Right. Um, and LeMay, I think, is the perfect example of that because he was a guy at the beginning of the war where he's like, "How can we do this and have the least amount of casualties as possible?" And Not just civilian. Time, but literally soldiers like he wanted to protect as many enemy soldiers as possible as well and got to the point where literally he was responsible for the largest loss of human life in history um, in a six hour period um, and it, even to the fact where mm. if you look at his bombing run career, the amount of people he killed through his bombing run career, um, he is up there. The only people in history who had killed who had been responsible for more death than he are Hitler Stalin and I think that's it. Um, and because of his bombing runs, uh, there's a rumor. I don't know if this is true, but there's a rumor that in the middle of the war he got pulled over for speeding, and the officer said, um, "Sir, you could have killed someone." And he says, "He said I kill people every night." <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> so, but, but, <laughs> let's say that that was a line in a serial killer movie. That's pretty <laughs> freaking. <laughs> Cool. It's a good line. That's a good line. <laughs> That's a good line. I kill people every night. <laughs> I kill people every day. The officer was like, "Excuse me, what?" Ah, uh, I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> and he's like, "Fly straight." <laughs> he's like, "Do you know who I am?" Do you they know? call me Iron Pants? <laughs> <laughs> Look at these pants, <laughs> bro. What if you just told someone like they call me Iron Pants? You can't. You gotta walk away from that person. You can't just be like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, I have somewhere I gotta be. I kill people Actually, every day. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, so that's so aggressive. It's very aggressive. Yeah, so it very clearly destroyed I his psyche. It's interesting that he became more that way. I mean, I guess if you're on the front lines, because I was thinking that the <clears> reason <throat> that wartime decisions get made the way they do is that they don't actually see the impact. Well, here's. I, I think that's an interesting point because here's the thing. Technically. He didn't because he was a bomber and so he just flew so over he flew and dropped it was out and was gone and especially towards the end of that in the beginning he was flying the lead plane to convince his pilots, but after a while he was literally kind of like you said throw a dart at a dartboard and obliterate that city. Um, he was so disconnected gone. from it that it really truly was. Yeah, I mean I think it's what happens now with like drone strikes and mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. especially the US government. Yeah, you don't have to just deal like, with we don't that. have to worry about yeah. Yeah, there's there, it's it's almost like there's no Anything. consequences for it. Well, it's not almost. There is zero there consequence is for it. Actually, literally, yeah. So there's so the it's, American government is the consequence for something happening. Yeah, like they're just like we're gonna murder everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it did. It's it, pretty cool. It did spark an interesting <laughs> thought for me because sure. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I have always been, and if you listen to our Nagasaki Hiroshima episode and really any episode where we've talked about the military, I'm pretty against what we did at Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Yeah, I think it was unnecessary. Seeing this story though is pretty interesting because we pretty much flattened the entire country. Uh, every major city, but even then, they had not and they had back. not. Yeah, they had not. That's what's pretty crazy surrendered. too. Um, and so a lot of people say 
if it weren't for the atomic bombs, we, we couldn't have got them to surrender. They never would have surrendered if it weren't for the atomic bombs. Mm. Um, and hearing this story, I think there's more merit to it than I probably ever would have thought before because the amount the of fact that devastation they so much else of Japan and they still <laughs> had not given and that's the other thing. That's what I'm saying. It's like you don't want to like you don't want to sympathize with enemy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, but at the same time, it's like if our government goes to war, you and I aren't involved yeah. in that. So it's like in if that, we yeah. die as casualties yeah. in a war, that's just like I don't know. That's just it, it, none of it. War is never good. Exactly, and and I think I think that's that's what you see with LeMay is outs in peace. He wanted peace. He wanted yeah, a yeah, just yeah. war that ended in the least amount of casualties. In war, it totally twisted him, and I think that's just like a picture of the problem of war. Like it, there comes a point where you get so deep into that, and I think his quote is is perfect because he says if if we lose this war, we're getting tried as war criminals. I think there's probably a part of him that knew I have to finish this now. Yeah, now yeah, that yeah. He crossed the line and he's like, uh, we have to win the Japan thought that too. Probably like we have to. Yeah, and that that's why now after seeing this before I would have said any country knows that nuclear war is futile. We're all dead if we do that. That's the thing. As soon as you engage in but a war, once it you starts, win or die. That's yeah, it. it's there's no turning back on it, right? Um, at least in the at least in your mind, you can't escape that. And so you just have to mm. keep pushing further until you are the last man standing. Um, uh, and so anyways, uh, that's Curtis LeMay um, and the bomber mafia. Uh, they uh, untold amounts of destruction. So um, yeah, and possum was just working at yeah. Carl senior the whole time. Yeah, and he was real upset and he was like guys. This isn't what we wanted. Yeah, and then he's like, "But hey, I came up with this new co- toy called the Bop It. Uh, <laughs> Pull it, <laughs> twist it, bop it, fiddle it off." <laughs> hey, if you like this episode, we've got more of them you can watch here, or just some highlights, some of our favorite parts from episodes before. Please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future episodes and leave a comment and let us know how we're doing. So thank you for being a part of this community. We'll see you again on the next episode of Things I Learned Last Night.